The following content has been provided by New St. Andrews College in Moscow, Idaho. For more information, visit us online at nsa.edu. Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. She's my sister. <laughs> and likewise, yeah, she is mine. It's, it's been this way all along. <laughs> Only now thought to reveal it to you in episode 26. <laughs> oh, it's not like they couldn't tell from our voices where we're indistinguishable. Probably not. I'm starting to think I have a speech impediment from every time I hear myself on the... <laughs> Don't listen to the podcast, but I was like... Do I lisp? <laughs> Apparently, we I just do. Kept it from you. I know. I guess I've never been, been told keeping this that before. a secret. Yeah. So here we are. It's the night. It's it already. Is the night this time. It's already given us a lot of reasons to think that. So it was not meant to be tonight. Well, yeah, the fates may be against us. I, the first thing that happened was that we have this little recorder, right, and a little disc that we put in it and we record it and then we hand it off. And people work their magic and Which put it Which is online. incidentally why we know nothing about the we technical don't side of this. We, we know don't nothing. do any of it. We push the button. That's what we do. And um, Sometimes. If you're lucky, we push the button. <laughs> <laughs> but the little tiny disc, I mean, it's tiny. It's like the size of your pinky fingernail, this little yeah. disc. And then you have to put it in a bigger disc. You have <laughs> and then you hand it off. pinky fingernail. <laughs> no, the other one's like the size of a quarter. Anyway. Yeah. So that thing gets handed back and forth and back and forth, and they give it back, and we and record on it. And in some cases, it might and go then through it went the missing. Goals. Yeah, it went missing, and we couldn't find it anywhere. And then we had to rummage up a new one, and then lo, the first one turned up again in our dryer. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what but happened guess what? there. It's not working. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, what could have happened? What might have so, happened to it? It's possible that we're we're gonna cut off. In the if middle we of this. quit, if we quit, then this is just an abbreviated yeah. Because podcast. we suspect that this this tiny disc has less memory than the other tiny disc. Yeah. So, but here we are. We're trying having a rally, we're <laughs> getting ready to podcast <laughs> for the night. <laughs> we're wow. giving it our best shot, mm-hmm. and that's all we can do. <laughs> and and it's night, so so. You know, you're already running the risk of us at night. Yeah, us at night, but also in Rachel's car. So everything's switched up right now. It's all different. Yeah, Yeah. usually it's my car, and I'm now in the wrong side. We don't know what will happen. (laughs) Uh, So, what have you been doing, Becca? Tell me, me. yeah. Well, that's other than washing memory cards. That's a surprise question. I don't know. It's Um, not a surprise. Every single time we podcast, (laughs) we ask each other this question. You know, I ask you, and then (laughs) and then that gives me time. Uh, You're like, yeah, no precedent for me asking that. This surprisingly Uh, personal question. This surprise we got together. Right. Okay. Well, it's Sunday today, and that actually makes it weird because we're because we've actually been having a day of rest. We had a fun lunch today i went out in the garden and rummaged up a bunch of stuff out of the garden and we have a bunch of san marzano tomatoes that are ripe and being fabulous and so we made a really fun pasta sauce today and we made homemade noodles and then Mm -hmm. i'm got so we've got some other fun tomatoes going right now little tiny currant tomatoes and i made those into a bruschetta topping with goat cheese that was stupidly good we got it right around ready and it was time for our kids to go off to a cousin <laughs> birthday party. So we were like, we'll just hang on on that. And so the kids left for the birthday party. I put the pasta sauce in the fridge for a bit. And then we had it late. And it was really, really nice. But anyway, nice. so it's been kind of a funny... Usually we do if our I bigger dinner made us, after If church. I had made our dinner or lunch from the garden, <laughs> we could have had like, I don't know. Like a dead petunia and a piece of tarp. (laughs) (laughs) 
locally that, sourced. <laughs> that is what we have. Tarp oh. on the boat. Oh, we had some really gorgeous little French green beans, yeah, so too. you're just rubbing really it in. Good. You're just really rubbing good. it in. See? I know. If I, I take can't, a moment. I can't feed us out of our yard. There's <laughs> nothing out there for us. No, we can only feed ourselves for occasional Sunday lunches. It's like how much effort, time, hours, and gallons of water went into that garden, and we get like two Sunday <laughs> lunches out of it. <laughs> I love it. It's great. I know. But it's fun. I, I like it. I concluded the matter on my set of dish towels. Oh, that they're been beautiful. Washed and I had the big to this afternoon. I cut them apart and hemmed them. So they're done. And I got done. to witness them. They're really pretty. Yes, I did. Make her. I they mean, are really pretty dish towels. Them. It's funny how much, how many different things now I'm feeling the urge to weave. Mm. I was correct when I posited 15 you know years ago funny? that I was going to be into this. You're I having a real weaving like renaissance. A real, kind a of renaissance. a real jonesing to be weaving and I'm having this with wallpaper right now, which is funny. But I'm having a real like deep need to make <laughs> another wallpaper. Well, yeah. I don't see why you shouldn't. I mean, no. I've got one I'm going to hang up in my coat room. We're working on our coat room right now. But don't you have one in there? I can see it from here. Your that's stripes. not my coat room. I that's should my stop. Entryway. I'm like looking out the window and talking. It's yeah, probably not helping. It probably sounds like we're in a coffee can. So I have to do some shopping for fall clothes because I think I have none. You personally? Mm-hmm. I know I have none. I am not. I am a real. The way that I do this is I buy like a nice pair of shoes and then I wear them forever. And then but mm-hmm. I'm like at that time where. That it's like starting to get cold at don't night. Don't you? And stuff. Every so often, don't you feel like there might be a lot of wisdom behind the house dress? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> I saw a lady come out yeah. her front door, and she's old school, wearing a house dress, and it was like super flamboyant, <laughs> crazy pattern, bright color sack, <gasps> like kind of T length sack, and she. She went out in it and did messed around in her yard or something. And I was like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why that, <laughs> that's a sensible garment you're wearing. You're like, I like what you're thinking there. This well, is, that is funny. Lots of free movement you can have with yeah, that. Yeah, I can see the point, I guess. <laughs> Although, it doesn't, oh dear, I'm yawning. yawning it doesn't already. particularly appeal to me to wear a house dress all no, the time. No, because but I the problem there that, is that you have to wear the house dress. Yeah, That's the but, downside. <laughs> <laughs> There's only then one again, thing you wrong with this, and that's wearing it. But otherwise, it's a great idea. But think it's kind of the one-stop unit. You don't have to put together an outfit. Okay, it's, Becca, I'm realizing that last week I said, because somebody asked us about this, on, and I said... Yeah, I'll bring it up. We'll talk about oh, it. you did. You promised I did. an agenda. I didn't really mean to do that, except for that I also messed us up last week because I forgot what we said we would do for tips, and we were supposed to talk about setting a table. And that's okay. why mm, that's why yeah, I threw that yeah. into the agenda. That can, we can save that's that right. for tips. That's right. Okay. Unless you want to talk about that. But I don't think I have much to say about it, so not super helpful. But... Body image, I think the reason we were asked this is because we talk both about making bread and having goat cheese bruschetta. <laughs> and I don't know if we talked is... about dieting. I think we probably have probably, touched on dieting. Probably. You talked about Weight Watchers. Yes, because I'm a big fan it's of the Weight thing. Watchers. Weight Watchers is a good business. I, I have done Weight Watchers multiple times from after having children yeah it's a good it's a good system no the first time i ever did weight watchers i did it with friends yeah in college. When you were like a size four yeah and you were like i need goal, to struggle back to get this two. goal weight loss of five pounds five <laughs> i was like things are getting out of control I time to join a five club. pounds to lose you gotta <laughs> focus people focus mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it is so funny because i think now i'm like well, I don't even know. I don't even want to consider how many pounds ahead of that I am still. Mm, yeah. At least, well, I don't know what that what that was, what weight that was. But I figure you got to add a little for every baby you've had. you got to give yourself a little buffer zone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, but probably, I don't know, 15 pounds or something more than I was back when I was panicking over those five. Right. You know, people right. always say. 
like, don't you wish that you could go back to the first time you thought you were fat? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the, the main thing that I want to bring up is that I will say that I talk to my girls about it. Like, I don't know. There's all this all of this worldly wisdom right now on body like having a healthy body image or what's realistic mostly it's how a to, lot of just bunk the yeah but one of the things that is weird wisdom of the world right now is like not ever saying anything beauty related to your daughters like never saying you're beautiful but just give them like say you're smart you're what who says this nonsense well, People who are being dummies. I think it's all about not wanting to emphasize the external appearances, so you're just not going to comment on them. You're going to not say anything oh, about that's that. That's terrible. Yeah, it's a dark scene. And one of, and anyways, that's one of the things. But one of the other things that happens. I love Weight Watchers, but it is not. Uh, here comes a car, guys. We have the windows down. It's a summer night. <laughs> you're going to get treated to the passing neighbors. So. Anyways, one of the things that Weight Watchers is not is Christian. So there's plenty of weird world things in there oh, yeah. where they're like, oh, yeah. you've got to practice, or I don't practice know. Practice loving yourself. They're like radical self love, like accepting yourself. And you know, it's such a dumb, it's the world's best imitation of gratitude. Like, well, the, the world's like, it's such a bad knockoff of gratitude. Yeah, because the, because, but it's the best. They're trying to heal the same thing that yeah. gratitude but does. But they're trying to do it with pomposity. By, by being like, I'm amazing. I am the best thing that ever came to this place. And, like, <laughs> I'm em- embracing everything about myself because I am awesome. And that is really sad. But, like, it's awful. No, it's and so they're trying awful. to come to some kind of peace with yourself. Whereas coming to peace with your God is a totally other thing. Like, right. you have to be okay with the fact that sometimes you just aren't looking your best. Like, sometimes... <laughs> That's just the way that it is. It's like I it's think, not about you. I think you. it's a big thing of of being able to be simultaneously grateful and mm-hmm. not discontent. Right. But also being ready to roll up your sleeves and work on it. Yeah. And, and it feels like there's this... That's uh, really hard to do. It is hard to do because there's this sort of on-off switch that we have that's either, no, I am perfect as is, no need to change, or... Or I'm uh, to change. I have to be discontent. I have to hate myself, and I have yeah. to. And that's a real problem. So, like one thing that I have practiced in this, because since Moses is coming in on two years old, I did Weight Watchers since he was probably six months or something, and um, maybe I think around there. Anyways, he, I so since I had him, I think I've lost thirty five pounds or thirty pounds or something, slowly over yeah. the time. Anyways, uh. But it's funny because I doubt that I gained that much when I had him. I probably yeah. didn't gain that much when I... I probably had Sometimes the... Sometimes these things accrue. I had my 10-pound <laughs> child, and then after that, I ate apple crisp. <laughs> <laughs> I probably managed to throw on 10 pounds after having him. I don't know. Anyways, I didn't... I wasn't checking all the time. But the thing is, is that it, I had to be like... I wanted this to be a long and slow process of just figuring out how to live now. I wasn't, it's not like motivated by crazy discontent or like I can't be a size bigger in jeans than I used to be or I can't, it's nothing like that. It's just like, what would I, where would I like to live and how can I get there in a reasonable way? Like, and how can I do it in a way that honors God? God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is doing something out of just discontent is never, that is not good fuel. No. You know, and, and it's when kind you're... of like guilt is a horrible motivator. Yes. It's like if you're guilting yourself, like I'm so gross, I'm so fat, how did I eat that? What was wrong with me that I had that cookie on Thursday? What is yeah. wrong? And the reality is that there's. And that's horrible. But then you're right. The world's version of trying to imitate gratitude is to say. Is to act like you're the God that made yourself. And right. you should love yourself and for you making yourself, yourself so awesome. As is. Right. And you have fabulous. to be. I talked to my daughters about it. I, I They know that I was dieting. I would talk about them with them about it. And I was just like, yeah, this is life. Sometimes you got to do that. Like, it's totally worth it. Every time I had you kids, I gain weight and I have to work to lose it and this is just the story of life like this is just the way it is it's like not a big deal it's like everything else in the world it's like you get your lawn looking really pretty and then whoa 
dandelions show up and it gets shaggy and you You're gotta like, mow uh, it again. I gotta fix that. You gotta know, do and that. You don't have to like despise your yard to go out and mow it. <laughs> and you don't have to say no. I love it bushy. And also you, you can, can just you can, go out and mow it. And you can also <laughs> you can also take taking responsibility for it. It's not the same thing as judging it. Like I think that that's part of the thing. Um, I said this once in a webinar, but it was when I was talking about body image. Anyways, it's just that like you can have been disobedient and that could get you to a bad place. Yeah. Like let's say you've been eating your emotions for a long time instead of confessing sin. Yeah. Let's say that you have been hiding in a closet every night to eat a whole bag of Cheetos because you're mad at your husband. <laughs> there, are, There's all kinds of ways that people gain yeah. weight because it is related to because sin or sin. to something yeah. that you ought to confess or even if it was just sloppiness and not paying yeah. attention you know whatever or just not yeah just kind maybe of maybe it's not a big go. thing but maybe it's something you know like maybe mm-hmm. that whatever it was that compelled you to start eating a bag of chocolate chips was something that you should have dealt with a different way probably right like probably. maybe so but the thing that i was saying is this is what's so wonderful about the god that we serve is that you can change immediately because what could have been a disobedient fat roll can become an obedient one as soon as you confess it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like fix your at like Here's the thing get about it, it right with God, and there's nothing. There's no way of no. It's like get it right, and now you're on the other side in the sense that now you're just honoring Him with how you're dealing with it. Not and a disobedient fat roll is the worst of all. Sorry. <laughs> but you could put it on disobediently, but you can also take it off disobediently. Yes, you can, and you can have it obediently, and and you can. I mean, I think that the thing is that. It's, there's no way of telling by, do you have weight to lose? That doesn't mean anything objectively. It's like, are you right with God? Like, right. then good. And if you know, it's like the guilt is not going to motivate you in a long, healthy no. way. It's not no. a happy relationship. So some of the things I would say, really practically speaking, some of the things that I would say, is it's going to like turn off on us. So far, it's still recording. Okay. We're good. Okay. So uh, one of the things that I would say is when you look at your at your life and you think like, okay, so I want to lose weight or I'm not happy with the weight that I am or I whatever. There are some things that I would say you need to have a real eagle eye to weed out of your lifestyle. And one of those things we're, we were talking about, gratitude is a wonderful motivator. So if there yeah. is a time that you start thinking like critical, harsh thoughts to yourself. You don't need to turn those around into praising yourself. You need to turn it around into thanking God for your troubles, thanking God for your life, thanking God that you had that sweet baby that made your stomach saggy. Thanking God that you are a healthy person who actually has the option of losing weight. Or that thanking you're a person who, who had enough food in the yeah. neighborhood to have gotten fat thanking in the first God place. that you live in a country where fat rolls are a problem. <laughs> yeah. You no know? No kidding. There's a lot of stuff to be thankful yes, for. Yes, yeah. And then, so the turnaround of, like, those mental things. And I have had many times where I, after having a baby, typically, when I am at my peak... <laughs> my peak, peak of chunk. My peak of not wanting to see myself in a mirror. <laughs> I have had many times where I pray about it, like make sure that my heart is right before I even look in the mirror. Like mm-hmm. where I am, like actually have to be like, Lord, thank you for this baby. Thank you for this situation. Yeah. Thank you that I suspect these pants are too tight to wear to church. <laughs> Thank you for the trouble that I'm having right now. Thank you that I live in a century of elastic. Yes, and like, Lord, just help me not be so self-important that I can't yeah. take it. Yeah. And you're like, deal with it. And I remember, I may have said this on a podcast before, but I can remember sometime really having to like face it with myself. Like, here's what's, why am I so embarrassed of this? You know, like, what am I doing yeah. here? Does anyone else care? And I was like, no, the answer is they do not. The answer yeah. is nobody at church is waiting to check if yeah. I am looking stout today. Well, or and if then they I think are, if they are, there's no, a worse trouble for them. Let's but on the just other stop hand, for a second and say, I'm sure you've had this before. There is a very rare kind of a woman. Oh, yes. But they're out there. It's a competitive where you say woman. Hi, they're there. And you can see that they're sizing you up. They look you head to toe real quick when they say hi. And 
and that is a weird that is a that weird is weird thing. but the thing that i have figured is that i was like so what if someone looks at me and thinks good thing i don't have to lose baby weight like that then i think well honestly if they actually are thinking that did i just motivate them to gratitude by being stout right. because what why yeah. would i mind that or if they're being sinfully comparative and proud that's really their problem not yours Mm, yes, and it's definitely not. That's definitely not a game you want to be playing. Of no. trying to get involved in that. So, and so, and you know how weird and awkward it is when another woman does that, sizes you up, and you yeah. don't want to be that person. No. And my husband has always told me because he's, he's always like, you know, the most attractive thing that you can, that you can wear is a good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> this is my husband, who is it's very kind so and very true. tender, but. Always there with the backhand, the cold backhand of reality <laughs> for me. <laughs> well, it's seriously, true. I just, I, I love that. That's something I'm very thankful for is someone yeah. who does not, is not too careful around my feelings to say <laughs> things like that. Like the least attractive thing you could do is get too self-important to just yes. have some baby weight to lose. You know, like yes. just, just move on. All right. So we've at least talked about uh, yeah. talked about and the thing is it is a tricky it is a tricky well, it's thing. like a lifelong lesson I but think. it's like being being able to to actually give something your effort while holding it loosely that's that's housekeeping to me all the time I'm always like life. I know I but I'm always like how do life. I care enough to want to work as hard as this takes without caring so much that I'm flipping that out at everyone. Yeah. About it. Like, I know. You try to motivate yourself to high speeds, and then pretty soon you're like, I can't believe you dropped a Cheerio. Yeah. Did you see that Cheerio rolling across the floor? And you did it. You did it. You're like, well, now I'm in sin over one stray Cheerio. One. And I was like, lucky that I could have such high standards. I know. Good thing I really tightened up on my performance. <laughs> I still oh the one cheerio oh yes no it's terrible you're like I have such elevated standards that I'm gonna lose <laughs> that, it over this level of things that I'm gonna flunk on the baby things so bad so yeah. um there was something else that I was thinking of we we're talking about that are we gotta run out of time do we need to move let's, right on let's to the check our time here all right well we're still there it says it's counting up we it's hard to know it we might turn off it, in two minutes it said right. we had 25 minutes of remaining time so <laughs> we're at 20 we're 21, 21 minutes so we might just cut off but but it's, it's nothing right. that we don't normally do to each other on the phone so <laughs> we might we, we actually very rarely have a graceful exit to a phone conversation no we well, always cut the other person off i really want to hear this but i'm gonna hang up <laughs> i'm hanging up <laughs> We'll talk to you another time when <laughs> I have happen. time. It'll happen later. Yeah. So yeah. we should mention the Bible reading program that yes, starts it's starting this a week. Wednesday. And if everything goes well with this podcast system, this podcast will be out in the public eye on Tuesday. Oh right. Which it's means very... you could still So if you haven't signed up, go to Christ Kirk. It's K I R K dot com slash Bible challenge. And the, everything you need is there. Sign up for the email. And one update, though. <clears throat> since since everything happened, and so many people have signed up, there's, like, women oh, yeah. from every continent except Antarctica. There's, what, like, more than a 1,000 women signed up, right? Yeah, I think we have well well over a 1,000 probably because we have... Um, a lot of people represent, like it's you really, have your daughters are not signed yes, up separately yes. and my so kids are doing it. And we my have three girls. But anyway, the one thing that happened is that now they did a guy's printable that yes. does not have the flowers. And on it, it doesn't have the connection to the webinars because right. we're not doing that for the guys. But, but there's a lot of guys that were like, Hey, there are a lot of this husbands. seems like a good deal. There are a lot of husbands who were like, what did they, did they say? Challenge in the title? Because yeah. Cause how challenges come my, how come my wife into. is doing something that's a challenge, but so I'm not. My, my two boys were like, Hey, that's cool. So they're going to jump in on it. There's boys in uh, my daughter's classes are doing it at school. There's anyway, there's a lot of yeah. Um, my my girls are gonna try to do it, and then I'm I am so excited about it because it is so fundamental and basic that it's almost not an idea. 
It's no. almost like Christians reading their Bibles. But I think that's kind of why everybody's so excited about it. I know, because everybody's <laughs> like, come it's like, on, wait, yes, this is the we thing. We should do that. This is we the thing we We got into it do. with some duct tape last night, covering oh, did some you? Bibles. Good, we did. good. We, we got some cute blue and white stripes happening on our Bibles. Oh, Whoa! Well, yeah, we you got classy. We got the Merkel house. It up. Yeah, yeah, we've only got two covered. We got to do. A I've been more. listening to a lot on audio, and so when something really wonderful happens on audio, did it stop? No, we're good. Keep talking. What, what? wonderful thing? When something what really wonderful, wonderful happens, happens on, on audio, audio. <laughs> something wonderful happens. <laughs> so. When when something strikes me when I'm listening to the audio, I flip open the paperback and like circle it or find the spot uh-huh. or whatever. Yeah. So that's what I've been listening to. Quite, I was listening to the Gospels. Like it's funny because I'll read like ten chapters in the morning and then I'll listen to a Gospel in the afternoon, and it's amazing how much Bible you can you can well, get okay. in when you're. Let trying. me tell you this. I I had the freshman coming over for soup last week, and so I had I was cooking a like rhinormous pot of soup. So I'm running around in the kitchen, and I thought, hang on, I'll just turn on my audio Bible and see. And so I got through Ephesians, and then I turned on Acts, and I got through a good bit of Acts. But it's funny how when you're listening to it, you just, especially in that big of a streak, you know, where you're like nine chapters of Acts, you find yourself um, noticing things differently than when you read it. And the thing I was telling Ben, the thing that is so striking in the book of Acts is every time he says... It did it. Switching it turned venues. off. It turned off. We're you just should turn your flashlight we're off. We're just uh oh you No. It's working. <laughs> we're just recording on an iPhone. Moderate technical difficulties. Our, uh, so Becca was our saying, motto is improvise, adapt, and overcome. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. We that's we may we sound do. different. That's because it's a different recording device. <laughs> <laughs> that might be what it is. Can't so stop back at you so were anyway, telling me what I was saying was that um as you're listening to the book of Acts as opposed to reading it and instead of reading it in little one chapter chunks, I'm just listening to it through, you know, like nine right. chapters at a time. And I was noticing how every time he says Jesus Christ, he throws in whom you crucified. And it was so striking. He does not so let heavy. that slip. You, whom you crucified. And it's like, you so know, you don't. Let's get it going again. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my word. We got a phone call. Now we don't know what we cut out. <laughs> so she's Anyways, saying whom you crucified every whom time. Whom you crucified every time. Which, if you get, like, the book of Ephesians or something, the Ephesians didn't crucify Christ. But in Jerusalem, they did. And it's surprising how many times he works that one in. Yeah. Like... Lest you forget who we're talking about. Well, the one that you crucified. Right. Anyway. Right. Like, so it's just, it's t- kind of fun noticing. So we had, did I, I feel like I did. Did I say all of this about Joseph and our last one? Yeah, we talked I about it. I covered that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the thing, <laughs> that's funny. But when you said that about whom you crucified, I'm remembering that part in the crucifixion story where they all are yelling, let his blood be upon us. And, oh my gosh. And, and on our, our children. children. It's and so it horrifies chilling. me. So like, chilling. It's so, you're just like, oh. But then the thing that's so crazy is like an amen. Like I know. Like It's both. It's like a double it's meaning. Both, it's both like, this is such horrible wickedness. And then also like today at church, you know, when we're getting to the Lord's Supper and I... And that's what I say to my little boys. We always say, are you washed in the blood and in the water? Like, tell like, and Moses will pat his, yeah. you know, it's like washing the blood in your heart and hit, pat his head for in the water. Shadrach, I said, Shadrach, are you washed in the blood or are you washed in the water? He looked at me and he said, both. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, Good both. Good boy. It's Good both. Good boy. And, uh. Anyways, the the point of that, like saying, let his blood be on us and on our children. And it's such a horrific thing to say in the Macbeth kind of a way. Like mm-hmm. the out yeah. damned spot. Like, well, in the sense that they meant it. And, in the and sense... what they meant was like, oh, that's fine. We'll take yeah, the guilt we'll for that. It. And not knowing that it was the only path to being forgiven. Yeah. I mean, it's just, exactly. yeah, anyways, that part always yeah. makes me feel sick. Yeah, like, I'm just true. like, oh, no, I don't know. do it. But then, you know. So, all right. We don't know what's happening with our recording devices and situations this time. It's sort of a dot to dot <laughs> happening. But, but It's actually, this is like the show that it's a scavenger hunt. Yes. We're like, take your next clue. <laughs> so the Follow us is, to our next location with a different recorder. The question that we have here now is, 
uh, should we have a tip? Yeah, the problem is, is that I said we would talk about a table sitting tip, but I have a, I do not have a good one because I feel like there's been way too much reckless table setting in my life lately. Mm, okay. So I don't feel like I'm really winning at setting tables recently. So Well, when you teach your girls to set the table. I'll, let me tell you one of the things for me. Okay. It's like teaching the girls to set the table. You know, you can look it up online. There's plenty of diagrams on where to put what. It's not just a free-for-all of fling a collection of utensils but on a, onto a... But on a know. regular weeknight. Sure. But yeah. I just mean, like, we always... You know, there's the way that you set the table with the fork on the on the correct side and the knife on the correct right. side and all that. But one of the things we had to work through is when the kids would get... When they were younger and they would get into a hurry setting the table... The plates are just drifting out all over the middle of the table. (laughs) And so teaching them where to set the plate so the edge touches the edge of the table. You know, like just have it line up here. And then this is how you set the napkin on. And then the fork sits on the napkin. I feel like we go in extremes. You know, either someone's in the mood to set the table and I'm in the kitchen so I don't see what's happening. So every once in a while you're like, oh... You got out all of the crystal and the placemats and the napkin rings mm-hmm. and the whole shebang for spaghetti. Right. Or I come around the corner and I'm like, what now? You call this set because, <laughs> and I'm like, but where are the forks? And they're like, look, I threw them all in the middle of the table. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, this no, is not it, but I guys. I just mean like learning how to like, this is what it looks like when you set the table correctly. And this is where the glass goes. That's one of the things mom did. Really yeah, well she with. was good. But even I, okay, even we had those old napkins. we had those old goblets, you yeah. know those green yeah, goblets. Yeah, we had those green goblets. And mom um, always gave me like I she would tell me to decorate dad's napkin. I was the youngest, so uh-huh. I really got the I was probably the one that was least easy to control at dinner time. Probably. So I remember like a a daily task of drawing sailboats all over dad's paper napkin. Oh, that's cute. I mean, I I was like getting that thing ready for the Navy (laughs) was what I did every night because dad was in the Navy. It was like, I thought he really liked boats. It's funny because he does sort of, I guess, but it's not like he's a boat fanatic, but we had that brass boat. I think I thought boats was like his scene. So I would get, (laughs) I would draw boats. And then, and then uh, we had these avocado green goblets that mom still has all colors of goblets, but not that color. She must have worn out on that color, but the bottom, we use those all the time at dinner, but the, the pedestal had a little dip yeah, if it in was it, upside down. Mm-hmm. It was upside down. And I remember, I think, us just really yearning to do it upside down for Dad sometimes. I remember so We, we did thought it. it would be so We winning. thought it would be, like, epic funny if we filled the pedestal with milk. Yeah, so we get, like, a of tablespoon of milk yeah. in there. Yeah, I remember yeah. her letting us do it and us nearly dying of anticipation about that. About like, what would he that's think? Such, it's just such a good example of what mothering joyfully what kinds of things that yeah. might entail like yeah. how do we both remember that like, i know she let us of fill the, the back things, we the wrong end of the we were like this is gonna be amazing <laughs> it's like when my kids will say occasionally like oh we always steal dad's undershirts when he goes out of town and tie-dye them well we did that one time like many years ago <laughs> and i told them we tie-dye them for them to wear as jammies he oh. was, like, due for a new round of undershirts. Yeah. So yeah. we tie-dyed a set of them, and I got him a new one. And But they thought it was going to be, like, so funny when Dad couldn't find his undershirts and then <laughs> they were tie-dyed. It was, like, and now they still think that that's, like, our family tradition. tradition. Like, we did it that's one what time. we do. They're going to put it in their autobiography. The kind of people that we are is whenever Dad this goes out of town, we, we tie-dye his undershirts. That's hilarious. But, yeah, that kind no, of thing. No, but I just think, like, in terms of, like having the table look beautiful whether or not it's a sloppy wednesday night and it's paper plates or something that's you know we all have those nights and it's such a blessing that paper plates are in the world i feel like i've been having those nights too often though where i'm usually have not set the table myself 
You well, know, I have the kids at the table. That's well, yeah, the thing. your kids are much but, more responsible. <laughs> but there's lots of years of going out and saying, "Okay, come back here, and here's how you're going to do it. Let's pull the plates right. back and put them at the edge." I of the do table and... things like I do have. I bought restaurant supply water pitchers, like the kind that they use at a at mm-hmm. a restaurant. Those stainless ones oh, because yeah. they're not so heavy when they have water in them. Yeah, a pot like a ceramic or glass can be really heavy for yeah. little kids to yeah. pour. Yeah, so. I bought those. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. I. <laughs> our background noises are really good tonight. <laughs> our lack of focus combined with the background noises. Yeah. So those pictures, though, I use those. And then I have... I don't like pa- placemats very much. No, I don't But I placemats. feel like I need them because I feel like I want the kids to know that there's like a limit on how far your stuff goes. <laughs> Like, Actually, there's a there's keep, truth there. Yeah, I'm like, this is your personal table. <laughs> and then there's the shared space. But yeah. but the problem is, then I just don't know why I want to wash those all the time. And because of the kids, mm-hmm. air, like, because of that, I feel like we have, um, we have... Hi, Ben. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me interrupt you. No. <laughs> Nothing else has tonight. We're just we're just on our like third device to record on, so we're we're winning already. We can't lose now. So special guest, yeah, my special husband. debut from Ben coming home. So the the placement thing, though, I. I always think I should do that again, but I just don't like cleaning them off all the time. You know, I'm going to pick noodles out of the placemats and <laughs> no. wash them. No, like, it's I got, not. I got laundry enough as it is. It's very true. Yeah. It's very true. Anyway, but I don't know that any tip emerged from what we just said. <laughs> Restaurant supply pitcher. That was good. a tip. That was a tip. Was a tip. Yeah. Oh, I do have another tip. If you have little kids, I buy those. I have, uh, no, I bought one once. The <laughs> lettuce knife, a plastic lettuce knife. Okay. It's like rips lettuce instead of okay. crush, like slicing it like a blade. But it is also very little kid safe. Okay. So if you do a salad spinner and a lettuce knife, it is a great job for little kids. Okay. That's like good. because it they love to do it, but it is also safety first. Yeah. And then the other thing that I will do is the little group, the Shadrach age, he's five, but even Blair could get into it. Is that that dinner hour thing. I let them peel potatoes and carrots. I'm like, build skills. We don't have to be eating a potato. <laughs> potatoes and carrots are so cheap. And yeah. they seldom ask what happened to it. <laughs> like, they just peel them. And and carrots you can just keep yeah, peeling just until there's it. no carrot anymore. See if you can whittle and, it down. And they just build skills. So, like, yeah. I got them. I... Well, that's a good tip. I bought that's some extra one. peelers that were just for the kids to use. Mm-hmm. And um, and anyways, I do that. I'll, so sometimes if I'm really not needing help in the kitchen, but I still have a couple people peel in veg mm-hmm. in the sink. Okay, now somebody else asked if we would talk about favorite cookbooks. All and right. so this that's is related. a good... I feel like I can say things about this. Um, The first thing is... I think cookbooks are hugely valuable for obviously recipes, but mostly I think a big part of it is inspiration. Like oh, my it, word, yeah. You know, even if you don't end up using every single recipe in the book, it really oh, it's no. like it can it can send you down different paths and go going different yes. directions and even if all you do is get one really valuable new skill out of it or yes. a new tip out of it or something. Or it's kind of like a continuing ed class. I yeah. Think. And like so, you like look through it, you probably learn some stuff. You yeah. maybe make a dish or two. So the thing is like I feel like I have some real cookbook recommends, but some of them are more for that than they are for the actual recipes. recipes. So the first thing is my the cookbook I would recommend for recipes as far as just a large number of wins out of mm-hmm. it is the Colorado cookbook. That's true. The but Junior that's, League that's, of Colorado. Uh, or Denver. It's a specific one. Colorado Collage. No. no. It's just called Colorado, the Colorado Cookbook. The Colorado Cookbook. It has like aspen trees on the Yeah, front. and it's the Junior League of Denver. 
Yeah, and my made... aunt Jill gave it to me for my wedding, and it was like, oh my goodness, so yeah. many good recipes it's in good there. One. And um, so that one—I don't one, think I have that one anymore. Mine is very, very battered, and I haven't honestly. I need to go back to it and pull some of those old yeah. favorites out. But West, that was Thirty Eighth Street fun pasta. One. Yeah, yeah West Thirty Eighth Street and pasta the and Colorado Calzones. And... Yeah, primavera pie. Anyway, there were lots of the. The um, Miner's Camp Pie. There was lots of good stuff in that one. And um, so just as far as, like, good recipes, I loved that one. Right. But then there's some other ones that I love less for the recipes necessarily and more just because it gets you thinking about stuff. Right. So one that made a difference to me was called The Breakfast Cookbook, and I can't remember who wrote it. The blue one? No, it's a little white hardback. But it was great because it's like she is a woman who has distinct opinions about how you scramble an egg. And she has a long description of how you have to beat the egg before you scramble it. And it makes all the difference in the world. And so when you read somebody who's really passionate about this is how you scramble an egg... It actually just makes you look at things differently and look at it a little bit more precisely and think, oh, how you beat the egg might actually make a difference in the finished product. Right. And Well, one thing I would encourage women who are cooking at home is don't just read stuff, but try things that you, like, think of it kind of like, well, this is a bad example, but sometime in college, I'd read a lot. I grew up reading a lot, and then I read a lot in college, and I realized there were still a ton of classics that I'd never read. And so I would go regularly to the bookstore and just go to the classics section and yeah. get a book that I knew I should have read by now. Like right. I was like, how come I've never read any of this yeah. guy or I've never done this? So I would do that and do some of that when you're cooking. With cooking. Like yeah. when you're like, I don't know how to make a good pie crust. Well, like don't let that yeah. last very long. Or make think, a pie crust. How about crepes? Maybe I should. You're like, why haven't I done that? Do that? So or- it doesn't have to be like like you can feed your family. And take yourself through a cooking school at the same time. Yeah. You can do that. And that's the thing is that it is, I do that kind of thing pretty often. Like, I feel like I would make the... Yeah, it's like, just decide you're going to learn how to make croissants. And then the thing is, master it. Like, you have to always do it, like, four or five times. It's tying it in with an earlier theme. I I can't master croissants and not be fat. <laughs> <laughs> When I okay, made those fine. croissants Decide for Easter, to master a I wasn't sure I could come back to croissants for a long time because they were so, they were so good. good. They were and really it was good. like, I, that is not safe. It yeah. was not but safe. But the thing is, like, you, ha- you can't just make it once. But I'm glad you reminded once. me of it. No, I, I'll You can't just make it once and feel like, sure. yeah, I've done that. You have to... You always have to try it again, and you're like, wait. This and you expect it to not turn out great the first time, yeah. and you do it again. And you know what I did that with is I make homemade pasta in the... Usually in the the best recipe, the Cook's Illustrated way is like in a food processor. Okay. But the Mario Batali Molto Italiano way is, you know, where you make a little pile of flour yeah. and uh-huh. you do the well. And there was a time a while ago that I was like, I'm just going to make fresh pasta all the time so that I can get good at the well. Because yeah. I want to know that I can do this. That's tricky. It it's, is. It's... And... and you made an eggy paper mache that just blew all over the fronts yeah, of and your then cabinets. It leaked all down yeah, everywhere. But, yeah, but I did actually. I don't know that I could pick up my skills where they were at that time, but I did actually get mm-hmm. to where I could do it in a little. Can mound. I just insert something here today yeah. when I was making the noodles? I did it uh, in my KitchenAid, and I used the dough hook, and I threw. I was using semolina flour and regular flour, and then the salt, and I just used the dough hook to stir it up because it makes a well like that. Mm. And then I beat up the water and the egg and a bit of olive oil, mm. and I dumped Clever. it into the well. And then I where's just this used... recipe from? Oh, it's just some basic pasta recipe. But then, but I was basically I was trying to recreate the well system, but in my KitchenAid, yeah. and it works surprisingly well because then you can keep adding a little bit of water right. to until it pulls mm-hmm. together into a ball, and you don't have it leaking down your cabinets. But so the the uh, Mario Batali one is no water. Oh, this one had oil and water and egg. Yeah, probably because you had the semolina too. Semolina, I think, needs more water than the. Well, it. Uh, I was just throwing some semolina in because I, I just used the rest of the bag up, and then so I just kind of added it. water. To well, it anyways, my point is, there's lots of times that I'm like, why don't I know how to do this? I'm gonna do this. You know, like why yeah. don't I know how to do? You know, yeah. like I ought to be able to do this. And sometimes you think that wasn't really that great, and I don't know why we all thought that. Would, like. 
I don't know why people think that matters, but at least yeah. I've done it. And I can, right. it's like reading a book that you didn't yeah. care for that is a classic. You're yeah. like, so maybe quiche is not my favorite thing in the world, but yeah. at least I know but how I've to make tried. a quiche. Yeah. yeah. Like, and so as far as like cookbooks go, I rem- uh, one that I really enjoy is, um, mad hungry feeding men and boys mostly because it makes you think about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a good topic. It's a good topic, feeding men and boys. And it's just like, and, and there's some good recipes in there, but mostly right. it's like, I love it that she cares about that. Yes. And and it makes you think about it in that way. And then there's, and I remember years ago, I was, you were in it too, the cookbook club. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I the thing that, that was great about that is... Like, you would pick out what cookbooks you wanted to be shipped to you next time or whatever. And I feel like I got a lot of benefit out of that because that Rouse cookbook from New York. Mm-hmm. That was there. Um, that was a good one. It just made you, like, care about Italian food in an interesting way. Like, oh, wait. Okay, this right. is somebody who's passionate about marinara sauce. And you yeah. read about that, and it, it makes you feel like there's there's nuances here, and, and I right. should learn about it. And so I think cookbooks can be really valuable just for that reason. I, that's why I love the jealous. That, cookbooks that for rouse, the same reason rouse. and Jamie Oliver's as well. Yeah, he's good. I know I probably some of my favorite cookbooks in terms of most inspiring. Like one that I think Matt, I think she's really good because of this. She blends between the inspiring side with the actually just tons of good recipes. Like mm-hmm. is um, Smitten Kitchen. Deb yes, Perlman. I have that one. Yeah, she's that's. There's a lot of Can really I say great that stuff the in there. Brisket recipe in that one is like absurdly good. Well, that's good to know. I make the. There's one in there that's like a black bean. I don't even know how you say it. Black bean. She has it like on toast. It's like black bean ragu. Rag o u t though. Yeah. Rag not. Yeah, not I think that's ragu. Sauce. Is it? I don't know, but it's not ragu. The jarred pasta sauce. No. So, anyways, that. Is super good, but I make it for my. I don't do it on bruschetta, but I, that's the black bean mm-hmm. cooking inspiration mm-hmm. that I've always used. Now, yeah. whenever I make black beans, yeah. I kind of. I don't look it up, but I do what I learned right. from her. And um, see, and I think, like honestly, when I I use Pinterest for recipes frequently because I'll be like, oh, I need a good whatever recipe. If you look it up on Pinterest, you can see the ones that are really highly rated, and yeah, yeah. that can be very handy. Um, and you can see a picture of it at the same time. So I do use that, but Pinterest is not inspiring in the same way that I think a cookbook can be because a cookbook a is, cookbook is actually like, it is there's it's something like, about letting you visit someone in their kitchen. It's what like, do you care like, about? What do you value? And it's like listening to a whole album instead of just buying the single. It's yeah, like, that's true. You get, you get a fuller experience. Well, you feel like you're learning from the person. I have to say yeah. that Giada has some really good recipes. Really good ones. But I have... One of her cookbooks is called like Everyday, Everyday Italian. Yes, I think I might have that one. That's too. actually a really that one has, like, there's a sausage and artichoke heart and sun dried tomato recipe in that one that is really good. It's at pasta. I left uh-huh. out the pasta part of that, <laughs> just a little. Yeah, but it is really delicious, and it actually introduced me to a different genre of like I think it has chicken broth in the. Like it's like the sausage and stuff and chicken yeah. broth. It's not a creamy white sauce, right? And it, but it is really flavorful and right. all on all <clears> the noodles. It was like a different well, pasta technique than I'd ever done. And like one time, I was getting into. I was trying to make myself get all the ironing done on one day a week instead of the emergency ironing, you know. But like get it all yes. done ahead of time. Yeah. And so I'm I just was gonna like, drop it here that. This is also like us not eating out of the garden. Is that... Well, let me just also say... I have a say steam this sitting like, on my dryer, like so... two years ago. <laughs> so, we like sometimes refresh steam some I stuff. I would like but... nobody to look at any Merkel's clothes <laughs> this week to see if they're ironed. This All right, like so go ahead. Ago. Go ahead, yeah. But I was trying to get myself to do that, and uh, we don't have, like, cable or anything TV. Like, if we want to watch something, we use Netflix or Amazon Prime yeah. or something. Um But anyway, I was like, I should just try and watch a couple of food shows while I iron because it will be sort of multitasking. Continuing Ed, yeah. You know, it's like I will, I will maybe get some fresh ideas to get me out of a slump Mm -hmm. of cooking, and I will get some ironing done at the same time. And so, and that actually was kind of 
like really helpful in a weird way because because well, you're like it, it was like a relaxing time to get a lot of stuff done. Yeah, because never in my lifetime do I turn on the TV during the day. Like no. that does not ever happen because well I have way too much to do. But it was like wait I need to get the ironing done. And I'm going to just yeah. set this up right here and I'm going to try and watch a couple of cooking shows and maybe it will, ha- and I, and I actually planned it so that I would do it before I made my menu for the week. This is really multitasking. Because then I'd be like, I might have a new good idea. And I actually came Often across some did really I good bet. ones If you watch way. Ina Garten, she's very inspiring. I, I did watch Ina Garten. Although but I it like was kind of like, without... I was stuck with whatever was like available on Netflix. Right. So, right. Um, But I did, like, that was actually kind of a good, but it it was similar to the cookbook thing in that, like, you just stop for a minute and actually listen to somebody talk about mm -hmm. it. So I have a lot, I like, um, I have one cookbook that's called Truck Food, which is all recipes from good food trucks around the nation. And And that's fun. There have been a number of, uh, there's a number of really good things in it. Some of them that were good, but I haven't repeated, but they were good. You know, like, like just interesting, fun things to do. Um, and then I guess we have, uh, now we're like getting talking really long winded. <laughs> no, you know, I... <laughs> Did you the, think... last, the last time I turned my phone on to see how long we've been going, it said like eight thirty, and I did I the math. I did thing. the math. I was like, oh, the other one was 25 minutes and this is eight thirty. But it was eight thirty at night, guys. I actually did the same oh, thing. Oh, that's so because... funny! And we've just been talking. This is like a world record length podcast. <laughs> and we're only just getting started. We're like now, we haven't gonna... even talked about carving pumpkins yet. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about truck food, and then we're gonna talk about. Just oh goes my to show word. you, Rach. Oh my word, this is our worst yet. I'm no, sorry. We can we can talk indefinitely. <laughs> That's the lesson from tonight. <laughs> oh my word, oh, we will let you really all hilarious. go. We will let Everyone's you go. Everyone's done. They're trying to get their own lives together. <laughs> oh my word, well, that's so for funny. Enduring us. Well, have a good night. We kind of pulled it day together there. Or whatever have fun. it is. Goodbye. Bye. New St. Andrews College thanks you for listening.